it's 12 now, so we are right on time to start with here with Dr. Iris Sobel. I'm very excited to have her. Welcome. Oh, you can see my background is not working so well. Uh, welcome today to this uh, this spotlight on women's financial longevity with Mikey Guy, your longevity concierge. We're at Discovery and Recommendation Hub for Longevity. Uh, we're looking at the concepts, the experts, and the brands that will make us uh, age better. And that's what we aim for. Not how long we're going to live to 150, but how long we're going to live with our health span. Uh, with me, I have today Dr. Ira Sabel. She's a fintech and economic, economics of aging expert. Um, she will tell you all about herself. And or this is a, the first of a three-part series. We're also going to give you the dates for those, and you can register later, um, that we're doing specifically on the financial longevity of women. So without much ado, and hopefully her audio is working, here's Dr. Ira Sabel. Hi, uh, hi everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Um, this is a, a first of one of the first of the three sessions that we're going to have uh, in the next couple of weeks about women, fintech, income, wealth, retirement, pension, digital, and financial uh, literacy. And I'm very, very happy. Uh, um, to meet you here all. And I will just tell you a little bit about myself. I am an accountant by profession. I've uh, worked for seven years until the beginning of the, of the 21st century uh, in KPMG as an accountant, as an auditor. And then I had my own practice and I was um, also a board member in many public credit companies in Israel, including in a Hi, Ira. We're having problems with the sound. Um, the sound is lagging. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you now, but the sound is lagging. Um, if you could start over again. Katie's um, from the panel, she's suggesting yeah to the, um shall i start to get closer to the mic where should i start i think from the okay. beginning where should i start? I really lost you the first okay so i'd like to introduce myself and welcome everyone uh, my name is Ira Sobel, and I am the founder and CEO of Fintech for Longevity, which is a consulting, a consulting firm and knowledge center about everything to do with aging, longevity, and caregiving. And our core mission is to redefine the relationship between financial institutions and aging and older adults, including uh, caregivers. And so now I'm going to share with you a little bit of re recent research about women income and wealth and give you my own perspective about how to, how is FinTech or how could FinTech help us, might help us in financing, planning, taking care of our finances and also about our longevity. Um, so let's start with, um, what is uh, wealth and what is income? Um, and I think it's very important to start with distinguishing between these two firms. What is wealth? Wealth is our accumulated savings. And what are the sources of our wealth? Is usually inheritances, what we have inherited from our parents, housing ownership, which was usually bought by accumulated income from the labor market, Wealth is also uh, 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 consists of 
uh, stock market, shares, pension funds, and even cash that uh, we hold. Uh, at the same time, income is the um, is the stream of income annually or monthly, like social security, annuities, income from work, but also things, uh, other uh, things that are generated from our wealth, such as interest and dividends, if we have an, a real asset, so probably rent. But I think that the most important thing that we sh sh uh, distinguishes between wealth and income is that from a social perspective, wealth reflects the potential of our standard of living in the future, while income is our real standard of living meaning that wealth has also the potential of generating income for us in the future. While income is a recurring income, and this is what dictates our uh, standard of living. Now, when we measure inequality and gender inequality between men and women, so I think it's important to look at both sides. What is the difference in the, between income of men and women but the long-term effect of this difference is the disparity in wealth and how much men and women have accumulated. And of course, that the gap in income has a consequential effect on the gap in wealth. And the gap in wealth is also the gap in how we're gonna finance our longevity and what is our economic what is our, what will be our economic standing in retirement compared to men's. But wealth also bears many uncertainties like market fluctuation, inflation. We don't know how many years we're gonna live. So longevity is actually at the risk of longevity or what is called by actuaries longevity risk. Are we going to inherit and how much? What are going to be our health expenses and long-term care? So while wealth is a lot of potential, it bears also many risks and uncertainties. So here's a nice pictures that we usually see in commercials. And this is very misleading because of many differences. One is the difference in the life expectancy alone and not necessarily with a husband or a, a partner. But, but also pay attention to the piggy bank. Piggy banks usually are different in size. Those of men have a lot of wealth in it, but those of women is much less. Let's start with the gender gap in life expectancy. And then I will show you some data about gender gap in income and then in the gender gap in wealth. Starting with life expectancy, um, let's see. We see that there's a big variation between the life expectancy in different countries. While Japan, France, and Finland take the lead in life expectancy of both genders, Countries in the developing uh, world, like Nigeria and Pakistan, are really lagging behind. But we see also that <clears throat> there, uh, women outlive men in e every country. And this is across all countries, although there's a difference of about 25 years between Japan and Nigeria. But this does not necessarily tell us about the gender gap in life expectancy or what is called the GGLE, sorry. The gender gap in life expectancy is not necessarily correlated with the average life expectancy. So the Russian Federation that we saw before in the middle here where women live 78.15, is not necessarily the highest country with the, the country with the highest life expectancy on average. But when we go to the, we, we separate or we look at the differences, we see that the Russian Federation has 
the highest gender gap in life expectancy across all countries. Um, while women outlive men in the Russian Federation, other countries like Japan, France, and Finland had seven years, while in the UK, United States, Germany, and Canada, it's five years. So the issue of widowhood or the issue of change in marital status and financing longevity is not so important as it is in Nigeria, as it is in the Russian Federation. And why do women outlive men? So from a, a clinical or physiological point of view, um, it is um, considered that men are more likely to be prone to viruses and uh, and their immune system is usually more is weaker than that of women. But at the same time, while men suffer more from from uh, uh, acute diseases and health events, women are more prone to chronic diseases. So their deterioration of their cellular uh, has a lower or a slower effect on the process of aging. So in Japan, France, Finland, and of course in UK, Germany, and Canada, five years is really a difference. Now, this of course uh, has an uh, effect on the distribution of marital status between genders. Above the age of 65, one of three women are widowed and men are, it's only one in 10 men. Now men usually not only that the life expectancy is shorter, they are also more likely to remarry faster after a loss of the spouse. And also divorced women, more divorced women than men, although the, 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 the difference is not as large as it is between male and female. And of course, this has an effect on the distribution of ages. But on, not only that, it, depend, it, 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 it affects the marital status. This has also many social and economic effects. For example, um, living arrangements. How does this uh, widowhood affect uh, living arrangements? Who is going to finance widowed? What is the inter or intergenerational transfers? And who is going to finance um, the, uh, um, the extra years? Is it the wealth of the husband or the partner, or is it what have women accumulated in the labor market? So let's continue and see that this gap in income, I just now want to focus on the gap in uh, the gender gap in income. So at the age of 18, men and women start in the same stage on the same income. But over time, there is a divergence between the income of men and women. And we can see that the, um, the maximum difference, which is about $10,000, but this of course are only averages, is around the age of 40. And this is the age where men are really succeeding or having an uh, increase in income in the labor market, while women are struggling to go back to the labor market after they have raised their children. But of course, this is only an average. But you see that also, interestingly, over time, this is quite, the difference is quite constant. But at the age of 65, while income is less of a proxy of, uh, uh, of economic standing of older people, we will see that the effect of this difference in the long run, in the long term, is, uh, uh, is very uh, significant. Now, moving on before, we can't talk here today without saying something about the recession or the COVID-19. 
And often this recession is called she session because a majority, the majority of job lost in April, but also later during the year were held by women. And while women were those who stayed at home with the kids, this will have a strong effect on their economic standing over time because less uh, unemployment usually is associated with less contributions to pension funds. And now because of um, the pandemic, we have probably, it's not so urgent, but in the long run, of course, this will have a major consequences, not only on the economic standing of women, but also in the, on the gender gap in wealth. Now, as we said before, there is a gender gap in income between men and women, which is going, which is uh, um, at its peak in the age of 35 to 40. But this is not, uh, uh, this is not the same, but when we look at race and sex. For example, let's start with the good news or the relatively good news. For every white man who earns $1, Asian women, which are usually perceived as uh, uh, working in uh, masculine uh, uh, professions like the STEM. The STEM is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So Asian women who work more in the STEM uh, market, they, for every $1 that a white man earns, Asian women earn 90 cents. So probably they should have uh, earned more than men and not only 90%. But now the bad news is that for every one dollar that the white man earns, the data shows that Hispanic or Latino women earn a, a, a little bit more than half of it. And black women 62 cents and white women 80% of uh, every white man. And this is of course is really a call for not only diversity and inclusion in the labor market, but also policy to make sure that there are no differences, not only between men and women, but also between races and ethnicities. So when we look at the gender gap in wealth on or what is the accumulated effect of the gender gap in income, we see the differences in the median retirement savings. So while men in the US, or uh, <clears throat> sorry, households in the US have $120,000 median retirement savings, in comparison to men, women's uh, median household retirement saving is 40,000, which is a, a, exactly a third. And this shows the uh, accumulated effect of this diverging gender gap in income across the life course. So what can we do? And what are the drivers first? Why can we explain that men and women have so many differences, not only in life expectancy, but also in income and wealth? And I like very much the theoretical or the perspective of the life course, because it says that there's a gendered life course, meaning that the experiences and the transitions of, the, of women are different from those of men. And meaning that, for example, that the transition from work to retirement, which we will be focusing in our next session, are really different between men and women, not only in terms of how they feel post-retirement, but also how the change of a move from employment to retirement, how does it affect on the short run and long run of their economic standing? So the timing of transitions and their duration are different between men and women. But also it's important to say that from a comparative perspective, 
the effect of the transitions, for example, changing health on wealth is different depending on the healthcare system and pension arrangements in a distinct country. Women in Germany, for example, don't have adverse consequences of retirement on their economic standing. While over time in the US, the effect of the transition from work of, to retirement is quite significant on economic standing. So the sens sensitivity of transitions over time across the life course, not only that differs between men and women, the, sense, the economic sensitivity of these transitions are also depending on the welfare context. Now, moving on, of course, as we know on the social roles, but social roles are changing over time. And clocking, what is clocking is clocking in and clocking out from the labor market, which is also different from men and women. For example, Retirement for men is, is something that is uh, for, for, several, for a group of people can be uh, a huge relief, but for others, or as research have shown, that men, if they extend their employment period beyond the legislative age, age of retirement, for them it's a privilege and usually associated with more educated men. While women are clocking out from the labor market because they can't find more uh, any more uh, work, or if they can or they have the opportunity to extend their labor market participation, they do it not because of an advantage or education. This is because they do it as a result of financial needs. 